attuned circuit used in a wide variety of radio applications like free running variable frequency oscillators, receiver front ends, antenna couplers and much more. This one uses a fixed inductor and variable capacitor allowing its resonant frequency to be varied. Making only one of the elements variable like this is fine for a narrow frequency range maybe 2 or 3 to 1 ratio at best. One way you can get around that and have a tuned circuit that's resonant on a wider range of frequencies is to use a 2 gain variable capacitor and a tapped coil. There the tuned circuit can be resonant on two frequencies at once. Here's the usual coil and the variable capacitor. That's a standard tuned circuit resonant on one frequency. Now, if the variable capacitor happens to be a two gain type, i.e. with two variable capacitors in it, well, you can use the second gain down here and tap off on an intermediate part of the coil. As a result, we have two tuned circuits. The full inductor is in circuit for the lower frequency range and part of the inductor for the higher frequency range. This is usually a two gain variable capacitor. So you've got the full frequency range adjustable with the one control. If you set the tapping point right, you should be able to get a small overlap. That is, the highest frequency on the low tuning range just overlaps the lowest frequency on the high tuning range. With that, you'll get maximum frequency coverage. I first saw this circuit in use as a pre-selector in a shortwave receiver. That covered several amateur bands, 3.5, 7 and 14 megahertz. This circuit was used to provide resonance on all frequencies within that frequency range. If you wanted to couple it to other parts of the circuit, you might have a primary winding here and then you might tap off somewhere like here to your rest of the receiver circuit. One design subtlety of this is if you're using this arrangement as the front end of a multiband direct conversion receiver. Let's say the receiver covers 3.5, 7, 10, 14 megahertz, etc. The lower frequency here might be 3.6 megahertz, and that's fine, that passes the desired signals. But let's look at what we've got at the second harmonic, and that can be a problem if you're using a direct conversion receiver with a local oscillator that doesn't have harmonic suppression. There, you'll have a signal at 7.2 MHz, and in the 7.2 to 7.4 MHz range is a lot of strong shortwave broadcast transmitters. That might be okay if your front-end tuned circuit was only resonant at 3.6 MHz, which is the desired frequency of reception. But if by adding this, our second tuned circuit here, was resonant at 7.2 MHz at the same setting of the variable capacitor, then you're going to get some problems. You'll get reception of these carriers and broadcast stations interfering with 80 meter reception. The cure is either to use a single tuned circuit and go back to either coil switching or plug-in coils, or redesign this circuit so that yes, you do still have dual resonances, but they're not on frequencies likely to interfere with one another. For instance, at this setting of the pre-selector tuning capacitor, that might be set to 3.6 MHz, but this part of the circuitry won't be resonant anywhere near 7.2 MHz. You could possibly achieve that by changing the coil tapping a little bit. A more popular implementation of this is in the famous Z-Match antenna coupler. This is one of the few HF antenna couplers that requires no coil switching. You've just got two variable capacitor controls and you twiddle them and you should be able to get a match on a wide range of balanced and unbalanced antennas. Numerous examples of Z-Match appear on the web and you might want to check out the VK5BR website which I'll give in a link below. You might think of amateur equipment that covers HF and VHF bands in the one box as being relatively recent. And it's true that it's easier to build homebrew equipment for one or two closely spaced bands than for very disparate frequency ranges. However, I remember seeing a multi-band transceiver in an RSGB handbook or one of their publications. 
it operated on both 160 metres and 2 metres, those two bands being popular for mobile operation at the time. Much of the circuitry, including the RF power amplifier, was shared between the medium wave at 1.8 MHz and VHF at 144 MHz. Here's how I think they did it. The top tune circuit is resonant in the 80 meter amateur band. 10 micro henrys in parallel with 180 picofarad. That's resonant at around 3.6 or 3.7 megahertz. The bottom tune circuit is resonant at VHF. There's about four turns of wire on about four millimeters air round, and then there's 25 picofarad, a trimmer capacitor in parallel with that. You might wonder how this actually works. After all, wouldn't one tuned circuit interfere with the other? Well, let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. Taking the 3.6 MHz tuned circuit, in series with it is the low value trimmer capacitor. At around 20 picofarad, that would be a high reactance at 3.5 MHz, so it would effectively block it from operating. But look at the coil, it's only a few turns. Four turns, maybe only about this much of wire. That's going to have a negligible effect at 3.6 MHz. Therefore, that tuned circuit will be able to function unimpeded. Now let's have a look at the bottom tuned circuit, that resonant on 2 meters. Here's the RF choke I'm using, 10 micro Henry, and again, like the low value capacitor at 3.6 MHz, that is going to block the 144 MHz signal because of its high reactance. But we look at the capacitor here, 180 picofarad, and that is an almost short circuit at 2 meters. Therefore, it will allow 144 MHz signals to pass. Consequently, both tuned circuits work, and we have an arrangement that is resonant on both 3.6 and 144 MHz. You might also see application of this in trapped antenna designs. This could be a bit of antenna wire between them, and you might have all sorts of resonances that allow, if you're careful with the values, multi-band operation with the one antenna. Here's one application for these multiple tuned circuits, set up just as an experiment to see how a diode mixer would work. This tuned circuit is resonant at 144 MHz, and that 144 MHz is produced by this handheld transceiver. This tuned circuit here is resonant at 3.6 MHz in the 80 meter band. I connected an antenna to it, just a half wave dipole. Those two frequencies are presented to this diode, 144 MHz and 3.6 MHz. Here at the output is another tuned circuit, very similar to the tuned circuit here at 144 MHz, but it's resonant at 147.5 MHz. With an FT817, which has SSB receive capability on 2 meters, I tuned in to signals on that frequency. I could hear 3.6 MHz signals being converted up with this converter from 3.6 MHz plus 144, giving our output of 147.5 MHz. I didn't need to connect the local oscillator directly to this because pickup was strong enough with this handheld. In fact, it was even being overloaded. To get best reception of the 80 meter signal, I needed to reduce the local oscillator's injection level. And I did that by walking to the other side of the room with this handheld. I haven't found a practical use for this yet, but I thought it was an interesting illustration of the simplest possible diode mixer. Potentially, if you connected this to an antenna, then you might even be able to transmit a segment of 80 meters on the 2 meter band. Although bearing in mind, there will also be an image frequency produced. In this case, 144 minus 3.6 megahertz gives you a frequency about a 141 megahertz, i.e. outside the amateur band. So you do need to be careful if you're using this type of circuit for anything other than laboratory experiments. In this video, we've described two experiments with tuned circuits. The first one, using a two gang variable capacitor in conjunction with a tapped coil to achieve resonance at two spots at once, 
allowing coverage of a wide section of the HF spectrum. Secondly, I've described how you can use two tuned circuits resonant at disparate frequencies, HF and VHF, in a crude mixer experiment.